Hi, so in this video we're going to be talking about the sign rule. Now this is something that does come up at fairly high level uh, GCSE or high school equivalent maths. Um, and it's going to be presented to you in a couple of different ways. The first one is going to be, it'll say A over sine, oh, sine, sine, A equals B over sine, B equals C over sine. C, or actually the other way around, where you've got sine A over A and sine B over B equals sine C over C. Okay, so all it is really is the relationship between the angles and sides of a triangle. So what we've got as a typical question will be something like this, and they're usually fairly odd shaped triangles and they give you a little bit of information and they ask you to calculate in this particular video we're going to be looking at the calculating an angle so it's this particular angle and they're going to call it x and the information we get is that that's 14 and this bit is 8 and we know this bit which is 106 degrees okay that's all the information we get so when you get something like that, my strongest advice is to make sure that you relabel everything to ensure that you use it in this way. Because if you try to use X and 106 and 14 and 8, it can get a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the bit I need to find out A. Okay, so it's actually sine A is the bit that I'm trying to find out. And opposite sine A is small a, which is this 8 uh, metres or 8 centimetres length. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to call this, it doesn't really matter, but we'll call it c, and opposite that is going to be small c. So what it allows me to do then is to put all these into a relationship to calculate this value of x. Now, I did mention earlier on that um, this is exactly the same as saying sine A over A and sine B over B and sine C over C. So that's what I'm going to use. You could use it that way around if you wanted to. It just makes it a little bit more complex. So I'm going to flip it the other way around. It doesn't really matter, providing you keep everything um, equaling each other. So I'm going to use sine A, which is this bit here, over A equals sine A. C over C. I could equally well have called this B over B, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's fill in some of the, uh, the numbers themselves. So I've got sine A, which is the bit I'm trying to find out, divided by A, which is 8. And on this side I've got sine of 106 degrees divided by C, which is 14. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is a little bit of algebra to make sure that I cross multiply it and it'll allow me to calculate the value of A or X in this particular case. So sine A equals 8 times sine 106 divided by 14. If you need to know how to manipulate that, if you have a look at some of the other videos, that will show you how to manipulate um, linear equations in order to get the subject on one side. Okay, if I calculate that in my calculator, I'll now get a value of 0. Point, I think it's 54929. Um, and because that's the value of the sine of A, I need to use inverse trigonometry. And again, if you have a look at one of the other videos, that'll tell you a little bit about that. So I'm going to key in my calculator the value of sine to the minus 1 brackets answer, or if you like, 0 0.54929. When I calculate that in, it gives me a value of A which in this particular case is what I'm looking for, of 33.3 degrees to one significant figure. Um, I hope that's okay. I appreciate it's a little bit complex to go through, but if you have a look at the description in the, uh, in the, the box underneath the video and also uh, look through the way that that's been put together, I hope it's been useful to you and I look forward to seeing you inside the next video. Can I do the cup of tea? Okay. <laughs> right.